Okay, let's talk about this interesting case. 56 year old female presented to the emergency department with acute confusion. Her spouse provides a history and states that she has metastatic kidney cancer and recently started a new experimental drug four days ago at the cancer hospital. She subsequently developed fevers, sorry, no fever. She developed chills, cough, vomiting, fatigue, and confusion. The patient herself states she has back pain, but otherwise does not really participate in history. Husband also says decreased urine and stool output. On exam, her heart rate is 104. Her respiratory rate is 22. She's setting 94% on room air and her blood pressure is soft at 90 over 50. She's altered, somnolent, and does not follow most commands. Her abdomen is very mildly tender. CTs were obtained suspicious for pneumonia. So initially she was started on IV fluid and broad spectrum antibiotics. Still not quite sure what's going on here. Initial laboratory values include a bicarb of 18. She's a little acidotic there. Her creatinine is five. So that's gone up five fold from baseline four or five fold. Her LFTs are acutely elevated. Her troponin and BNP are quite elevated. White count is notably not that elevated. Uh, uric acid is 14 and her arterial blood gas shows hypercapnic, hypoxic uh, acidosis here. So we had oncology come see the patient in the emergency department and they were able to clarify a few things. So she was diagnosed with metastatic renal cell carcinoma two years prior. She's had a nephrectomy and then a sternotomy for a transatrial IVC thrombectomy. She was previously tried on a different chemotherapy regimen, but had disease progression. So she was started on this novel experimental IL-2 inhibitor. And what oncology is worried about is a disease process called cytokine release syndrome. So she was started on uh, tocilizumab, which is an IL-2, sorry, an IL-6 inhibitor and dexamethasone. She was of course admitted to the intensive care unit. She was started on a couple agents for her hyperuricemia and placed on BiPAP, but not intubated. So let's talk about cytokine release syndrome. Essentially, it's a systemic inflammatory response triggered by infection and drugs, more, more well characterized in drugs, associated with antibody-based chemotherapy agents such as rituximab and brentuximab, among, there's a lot, uh, certain classic chemotherapy agents, such as oxa, platin, and lenalidomide stem cell transplant, graft versus host disease, and then it has been implicated in severe viral infections like influenza. On the right, you can see a illustration of the clinical manifestations, but essentially it ranges from mild and flu-like to life-threatening. In mild cases would be like fever, fatigue, headache, rash, arthralgias, but the patient is mentating well. Um, in more severe cases, you get hemodynamic instability, uh, end organ dysfunction, especially neurologic, uh, multi-organ failure, and DIC. Labs can be notable for anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, acute liver injury, acute kidney, kidney injury, coagulation dysfunction, and elevated inflammatory markers. Differential diagnosis uh, for this patient includes sepsis, right? Infection would be high on the list. Cardiogenic shock, cytokine release syndrome, tumor lysis syndrome, Notably, the patient's other electrolytes, intracellular electrolytes, were not markedly elevated other than uric acid. Uh, immune effector cell associated neurotoxicity syndrome, multi organ dysfunction syndrome, which she sort of had, and then uh, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis or macrophage activation syndrome. So, the natural history of cytokine release syndrome is that uh, it really depends on the immunotherapeutic agent. The ones that engage T cells carry a much higher risk. It's also influenced by the type of therapy, the underlying disease that's being treated, and then, of course, the characteristics of the patient, you know, a young, healthy patient versus an old, frail one. Uh, first dose effect can occur, meaning it's not seen on subsequent use, and then the strength of the T cell activation and degree of T cell expansion correlates with the severity of disease. And there's a few small studies that say children at higher risk. Pathophysiology in general is not well understood. Certain cytokines are noted to be elevated, included IL-6, IL-10, and interferon uh, gamma. IL-6 seems to be the key to CRS and is highly elevated in uh, cases. And then IL-6, the IL-6 receptor inter interferon and SGP-130 seem to correlate to severity of disease.
So management, there is a grading system put out by the uh, oncology folks. Um, it is challenging, right? There's just a lot we don't really understand about cytokine release syndrome. It's limited to case series. Treatment guidelines are based on expert opinion for that reason. In mild cases, you just treat them symptomatically, right? Antihistamines, antipyretics, fluids, but in severe cases, uh, different story, right? Empiric antibiotics should be administered if infection is being considered but cannot be ruled out. Uh, management of critical patients such as our patient is a little different, right? They end up in the ICU. You need to give them uh, tocilizumab, right? Which again is the IL-6 antagonist monoclonal antibody and is considered the gold standard. There are additional agents that can be used such as corticosteroids and some other immune modulators to um, suppress the immune system. Empiric antibiotics, of course, and then supportive measures, depending on the ways that the patient manifests, right? Pressors, fluids, reversal of coagulopathy, et cetera. So in our case, the patient did very, very well. She improved rapidly in the intensive care unit. Um, she was found to have new brain mets and developed a facial droop in the hospital, but of course was not um, lysed and had no neurosurgical intervention. By hospital day four, she had a normal diet. She was taking oral meds. She was at her baseline, essentially. And then we tried to transfer her to the cancer hospital, but she was doing so well, she was just discharged with closed oncology follow-up. So three key points about cytokine release syndrome is one, it's a systemic inflammatory response triggered by infections and certain immune modulating drugs. Symptoms can range from mild and flu-like to severe and critical, as well as life-threatening with multi-organ dysfunction and hemodynamic instability. And treatment is with the IL-6 antagonist uh, tocilizumab which seems to be the key mediator of CRS.